33 he said if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed come on somebody if you what continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free it is truth that brings true deliverance that brings true salvation that brings true relationship with God without truth we are still in error and still under the control of the father of lies Satan it is truth that brings true redemption and if you think about it you can't even have a true relationship with anybody without truth hallelujah because otherwise that relationship would be based on lies be based on things that have no relation or connection to truth and anything that doesn't have connection to the truth is not real hallelujah it is stating false evidence it is twisting the facts to state something that did not really happen and that in itself is defined as a lie hallelujah and we got to know if we are not zealous and passionate about truth we will end up deceiving ourselves if we are not what zealous and passionate about truth we will end up deceiving ourselves or just being deceived because it is truth that sets you free from lies come on somebody hallelujah hallelujah and we got to understand that it is in that knowledge of truth that true freedom and liberty comes and the word of God says there is no lie in truth there is no what lie in truth so when we find ourselves telling lies we cannot say it's the Lord made me do it I was serving the Lord that's why I had to lie no come on now only the devil causes people to lie and lies create us a, a, a artificial sense of security in a position that is fatal and dangerous it is giving someone some false sense of security that somehow the lies have protect them from danger protect them from consequences but lie does not protect you lie only sets you up for judgment and the word of God says every liar will have their part in the lake of fire he says again every lying tongue shall be stopped come on and this is a very serious matter for God on this basis that this is something that is impossible for God to do and it is to lie because God's words have creative power and he watches over his words to bring it to pass when he speaks his words his words create what he says and he observed what was created to ensure that what he intended is what is there come on somebody and that throughout creation in Genesis 1 and 2 we can note when the Lord was creating things in the six days everything he spoke forth his word of God says and he saw that it was good he saw that it was good and we know that it was good because it was produced by truth hallelujah 
truth does not produce evil. Hallelujah. Truth does not produce evil. Truth does not produce lies. Ah, come on now. I'm talking to you. Truth produces what is good. And God is good. And everything that proceeds from him. Ah, oh, come on now. Is good. The word of God says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. In whom there is no shadow of turning. No variance. Come on now. So if we know him, we know that as John stated in 1 John 1 verse 5, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. God is light and in him there is no what? No darkness at all. Come on now. Hallelujah. So he said if we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. Not if we have fellowship. But he said if we say that we have fellowship with him. Because we're talking about those lies. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. What does he say? We lie and do not practice the truth. Then that means truth requires practice. Uh -huh. For anywhere there is a swaying, diversion, detour from truth, we end up in lies. And lies are not of God. They are of the devil. Hello, somebody. But I know there are many people who claim to have fellowship with God while being in darkness. Uh -huh. But truth have a way of clearing some things up. <laughs> and the word of God is truth. Come on now. So he said, if we say, he says, if, if we say that we have fellowship with him, that is with God, and he said it from verse 5, that in him there is no darkness at all, and he says, and we walk in darkness, but we say we have fellowship with him, who in him there is no darkness at all. He says, we lie. I want to dig that one good because of the people that don't want to. Ah, okay. Because of the people that don't want to hear the word about walking in his righteousness and say, no man, nobody can't. Perfect. So we are going to sin and God expects us to live that way. That's why Jesus come to die on the cross, you see. To lice us that when we sin, we get away with it. And that's not the truth. Because he wants us to have fellowship with him. But he says, there is no darkness in him. And I want you to read that scripture very carefully. 1 John 1 verse 5 to 7. This is the message, he says, we have heard from him and declare to you. Come on. We have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him, him God, there is no darkness at all. So if a person say, I'm in him, but I'm also in sin. Ah, uh -huh. that's a lie. Oh, come on now. And how much people that say they're part of the church, you can tell that. 
and they believe that they say no you can't judge me but the word of God is what judge you we didn't write it come on now he, he says now if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not what practice the truth now if you're lying are you saved are liars saved if they are saved what are they saved from I seem like they're saved for lying but, but you're not saved for sin you're saved from sin and if you're saved from it you mustn't have it oh Jesus but he says in verse 7 this is the answer but if you walk in the light huh? if we walk in the light as he is in the light so it says not just walk but it says walk in as he is in it and there's no darkness in it with him now if there's no darkness in it with him can you be in it and have darkness no because it says there's no darkness at all in him hallelujah and he says if you walk in the light as is in the light what happens we have fellowship one with another you see some people trying to have fellowship in Christ and in sin and wondering why they're not having fellowship with the church It stated right there John was not saying you can fellowship with sin and still fellowship with him he says if you walk in the light as is you, as is in the light we have fellowship with one another there's a condition for that fellowship read it there's a condition for that fellowship hallelujah it's not fellowship with everybody <laughs> come on now because why then would Christ need to come for you to be reconciled to God if God was fellowshipping with you in your sin why would Jesus have to come to take your sins away for you to have fellowship with God If God is fellowshipping your sin, then his sin in his son would be unnecessary because you're already having what the son coming for you to have. Uh -huh. So it is sin that separated us from God. Hallelujah. And God doesn't view sin as a mistake. Sorry for all the preachers telling the people. You make mistakes, so everybody who make mistakes is sin. That is not true. You need to read your word and read it and divide it accurately. The word of God did not say Adam made a mistake. And God threw him out the garden. Hmm? Sin is not a mistake. Now what happened where that erroneous teaching came from was that they took the word sin and looked for the definition of it in the world's dictionary. Not according to what is used in scripture but according to how the world used the word sin and they found the word sin being used in a, 
archery sport. That means the archer with the bow and arrow missed the mark of bullseye and said, there it is, it's a mistake. And when the archer missed the bullseye in that sport called archery, that word for that miss of the bullseye is called sin. And then the preacher start to use that definition to say that is what sin mean in the Bible. But that is not how sin is used in the Bible. God don't kill and destroy people for mistakes. But when it is based on a lie, it leads people more into deception. Somewhere, somebody got that information and start to spread it amongst the people. And people who heard it came under that deception to think sin is a mistake. Now I want to highlight something about that words mistake they use from that archery sport to say that's the sin used in the Bible. When the archer is aiming for the bullseye, he doesn't aim to miss. Let me give you that one. He doesn't what? Aim to miss. It means it was a mistake. And his part to miss the bullseye because that was not what he's aiming for. Ah. But when Eve took that fruit from that tree of knowledge of good and evil, she was aiming to eat it. It's not a mistake that her teeth went into it. And it went into her mouth. She chewed it and swallowed it and gave her husband with her. That's the first record of sin in Genesis 3. To show you how it is used. And teachers of the word are taught to use a law in study called the law of first mention the law of first mention is stating when you are using a word to know how it is used from a text you must look how it is first used and stay faithful to that context of how it is used so we cannot say Adam and Eve made a mistake. Mm. Mm. The intention behind the archer is not to miss the mark. So we cannot use that word sin from archery to use it as sin in the Bible. That was an error from the beginning. To look for definition from the world to address something spiritual from God and that in itself brought the error in itself hello because they are seeking for truth amongst liars and you can't seek for truth amongst liars come on now so the intention was to sin. The intention was not to make a mistake. Right, so if an archer can strike the bull's eye and he aim outside of the bull's eye, that would be sin recorded for the Bible. Because he intentionally aimed for something different than the target given to him. So it is not a mistake. He deliberately aimed for something else than what was positioned to him. Come on now. Likewise, when the Lord gives you a word 
a command and you deliberately aim for something else than what he command that's not a mistake that is intentional come on that adds some time for deliberation for thought and reasoning before the action is carried out hello I believe it's in James 1 verse 7 hallelujah or 1 verse 13 it says let no man say when he's tempted I am tempted by God as James 1 verse 13 let no man say when he's tempted I am tempted by God why for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone with evil come on now so how are they tempted verse 14 and 15 tells us of James 1 he says but each one is tempted when he's drawn away ah by whose desire god's desire god's entice no his own desire and his own enticed then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin when desire has conceived it gives birth to what to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death come on now what's the process there watch how it is operating the desire of itself is not the sin ah. the desire of itself is not the sin mm -hmm. But when he says the desire has conceived, he's talking about say, it's some something was there to entertain, to facilitate the growth and development of that desire. That's why he says it's conceived. Because conception happens and the sperm hits the ovary. If there's no connection there it's just waste so it says how does this desire produce sin it says when you put that desire above what the word of God says let me say it to you again when you what put that desire above but that then that is intentional that requires thought and they talk about people sin when they don't know I'll know they can't find that scripture show me everybody say right now Bible, I know they can't find it because sin requires thought there are desires and enticements that draws that person away. Eve had some dialogue with the serpent that helped to facilitate, encourage the growth of that desire to oppose what God said. Mm hmm hello so her desire for eating fruits in the garden was a natural desire God gave her it was not sin to desire to eat fruit because God made it dear for them to eat but the sin came when she desired put her desire above what God said you get it now that's why he stated it that when the desire has conceived it brings forth sin it's not the desire is the sin 
That's why some people believe they are sinners every day. Because when they desire come, they say, see, they're missing already. <laughs> That's why they believe they can never be perfect. Because no one ever taught them that this is no mistake thing we're talking about. Come on. Sin is not a mistake thing. It is intentional. My God. Hello. So he says, when the desire has conceived, that conceived desire, that desire that's been entertained, that desire that's been given your full attention and support over what the word of God says produces or push you to a place to oppose the word. And it's that opposition to the word, that disobedience to the word, that is sin. Are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. Come on. So anyone can have an evil thought. Anyone can what? Have an evil thought. But do you entertain the thought? You see it now? So some persons feel guilty just for having a thought. That was evil. Us. And then they say, I sin because, see, they, I think it's so. It's done already. I sin when I don't even know. Uh oh, let me get you cleared up on that one. Come on. You need to know the truth. I say you need to know the truth. I say you need to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Come on now. It's not merely the thought that is a sin. It's the entertainment of the thought. To fuel and to give energy to that thought that will move you into action against what God says. That's the sin. Are you hearing me? Now any man walking down the street, I don't care which pastor, bishop, deacon, elder you know. Hello somebody. Apostle. Pastor, priest, and king walking down the street and he said he don't see any girl that look attractive to him. Attractive means it as a nature to attract. The point then of being attracted to them is not a sin because there's a natural nature in you towards the opposite sex of attraction. Well, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're lean. They don't want to say nothing wrong with it, so we say lean. <laughs> you're going the other way. You're taking one different zone. Hey. So, so it is a natural response for you to feel attraction. Feeling attraction is not a sin. But do you feel that attraction? Do you meditate on that attraction to build that thought into other imaginations? And carry the thought to a deeper level of what you would have do. That is the sin. Come on. Talk to me now. I'm giving you something deep. I cut anywhere the devil hide behind. We're going to pull up that stone. We're going to pull with that cupboard. He going to pull off that arm I hiding behind to think he got an angle over your life and you're going to disarm him, chop him down and throw him out and take authority over your life in Jesus' name. 
Come on, somebody. So it says, the desire needs something to conceive. Uh -huh. The thought is like a seed. It's like a sperm. But with no ovary. There is no conception. In other words, if there's not nothing to foster that thought, it just pass away as a waste. Woo! Glory to God. So what, when he says, when the desire has conceived, he's saying that you have entertained, you have fed that desire. You have fed it with other thoughts that have made it more than just a thought. Come on, talk to me now. And now it's a growing passion in you that is driving you towards action that oppose the word of God. So when Jesus says, any man who look on a woman to lust after in her heart, it's more than look because man can walk down the street with blind fool. He still have a look. Oh, whether you drive or you not drive, you better look. But this is not just look. He's talking about a kind of look. You know that kind of look there? And seeing somebody look on you and you feel like, say, boy, you're near kid. You have a hand closed, but you look like they take off everything already. Because their mind, they are fed more thought to the look that it becomes more than just a look. Talk to me here. Here's that verse. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Matthew 5 verse 28 to 29. He says, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman already commit adultery. Oh, I left out a piece. Okay, you see it? So some person, that's all they quote. Whoever looks at a woman, see there, they commit adultery already. No, look what he says. Whoever looks at a woman to lust for her it's not just a look, but what they use the look to do. You see, the, the, the desire is there, but they fed that desire, <laughs> nourished that desire, and grew it to something more than just a thought, more than just a look. You're getting it? Come on now. Hello, somebody. To lust for her has already committed adultery with her. Where? In his heart. Look what he says. If your eyes cause you to sin. Come on now. If your eyes cause you to sin, pluck it out, cast it from you. And if you, if you what? It is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than your whole body. Because, the, so, so what is the Lord telling you, dear? Look out your eye. Uh, because I can tell you, say, even those who are blind still lost it. You don't have to see to lust. Cause of the blind lust. Eh, eh, I'm blind and married. You know what I wanted to? I will. Right. So, so it's more than you taking out the eye. But it's, but it's talking about that kind of eye. Did you get the message there? Or do I, let me go in more for you. In other words, that lustful eye. That eye that you have that is 
tripping down people and wondering where you're going to next. He said, pluck that out. Because if you believe that is the physical eye you're taking out and you're going to stop, me can tell you, say, how many I got? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the mind of what we have from remembering things. Mm -hmm. So you can block out the eye as you hear the voice of your member. Mm -hmm. Not that one there. I don't want to remember that one there. Come on now. And even blind can, can get an idea how you look and how you feel because they will touch, touch, you know, and, and, and say, oh, 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 no, I know who I'm talking to. Mm, I feel your face. Uh, we, 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 we. <laughs> So, so it, the taking out the physical eyes will not stop that because a spiritual problem must be corrected in the spirit. So when he says they commit adultery in the heart, he's not talking about the heart that pumps the blood in your chest. <laughs> he's talking about in your spirit. Come on now. So he says, you have control to get rid of that. Not true instead of allowing that to remain and cost your soul salvation you got it hallelujah so so we we went to that to show you that then we want to show you say you have power to control the thoughts that's so what second corinthians 10 verse 4 hallelujah yes that's good now, now, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3 to 6. He says, for though we walk in the flesh. Though we what? Walk in the flesh. What do walk in the flesh mean? God say you must walk in the spirit. So he means that though you walk in the flesh. <laughs> we have a flesh and blood body. So we're walking in this body. Car uh, being spirit beings, we live in our body. And we possess a soul. But he says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Uh, so if, if my hand touch one sister, I mean, I go chop off the hand if you say, we go stop touch sister. Because I let me chop off the hand, elbow still go touch something. Oh, you know, I'm targeting a church. Yeah. You need a private session. You need, you need, a, you need a time. You need time out. Mm. I'll do it too. Hallelujah. So, so it, 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 that won't solve the problem. If you have a lost problem, cutting up body parts will not stop it. Because all those who paralyze still have a problem. Can't move ahead and still want something. Hello. So he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Means they are not fleshly. What we are using to cut them down is not flesh and blood. Come on now. But what we're using? We're using spiritual weapons to cast down things in the spirit. You know, it's always... I was talking about it yesterday with a lady say, you know, persons that don't understand spiritual warfare, they will they, they watch some things, some movies and things say, Oh, I saw you go, you know, some person live in a haunted house and demons harassing them, and you see the man for the house gone, you take up gun and bullet. When they do it gun and bullet in a spirit, you can't shoot spirit with gun. But they watch that in movie and say, oh, you look like that's how it work. You cannot use physical weapons to disarm spiritual things. I'm talking to somebody. You cannot correct a spiritual problem with a physical thing. 
That's why many people who are being demonized, they go to Dr. Phil. If you are suffering from demon, when you tell a doctor, say, hey, I, I seen spirits, they say, you know, it look like you have any hallucinations. So we have a pill for that. Don't make you see them anymore. When you take this pill, you're not going to see them anymore. But you know, funny thing about those pills, it makes you sleep most of the time. So you're not awake much to see nothing much. So that's not correcting the problem by we putting you to sleep for most of your life and saying you're getting better. Holy past sleep does not equal to productivity. And, and so that doesn't correct the problem. I'm talking to somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Because I remember casting a demon out of a man who the, the, the woman was a daughter of an evangelist and she came here saying that she hooked up with this man and then find out afterwards he's a reader and he read of people's life and he, he buying up she won't live and she can't live because he have a lot of powers and anybody she talk to he can't tell who he talk to anyway she go he can't find her so she felt trapped. She heard about this preacher and came to me. And was describing the problem to me and telling me she wants to give her life back to Lord. So I said, all right. Bring him come, man. Let him come here. Invite him to come with you here. She said, no, 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 pastor. I was just telling you to pray. Because there's no church in Goto. And he mash up a church. So I said, what a marvelous thing. I, I sound like the man I receive insight now. What a marvelous thing. He, any church in going mash up. He said, then he need to come to this one. Hallelujah. So, so she was begging me, please. Say, I, she, I don't understand the severity of what is going on with him going to churches and yeah, I, I shouldn't I better I just pray for him but she don't want none up to me in the church and, and I say listen to me lady you see anytime a other man can come and mash up this church me lock it up and go home I, I, I should not be there. I need to go get another work. Find something productive to do because a long time me the fight and lick down up your man. And many people came here seeking for refuge when they were under heavy witchcraft. Heavy. Do where they knock. Things they appear, things they appear on their skin. Seeing and hearing things. Come on, somebody. And all they try, they try. They say, Oh, God, every prayer, and I'll go back there. But when they came here and I prayed over them, some of them are even not to go to their house and anoint over that house. But they, they saw the difference. Come on. And they praised God about it. And I wasn't destroyed because I did that. Hello. So she said, all right. She going to make him come, but if we want to change my mind, we can tell her. Call her and tell her and she will tell him. Say so no brother come. And say so you're talking to the wrong person. You hear what I tell you if you do? So she brought him. One Friday night we're having a healing and deliverance service. And we're upstairs. Speedy print at the time. 
those railings you see on the speedy print is we actually build it on a building to put a canvas around it to cover because we're having service on the rooftop and we just started the railings are still there to this day yeah and we, i remember when we were up there and he came in that night she come in first and they may look for him, for him and see him to let me see one catch come around her back walk on the skunk and come stand up on her back and catch her and look for me like yeah, with a child with a little thing we in a little church we have a few little members on the rooftop of building you don't know why your girlfriend invited my this girl this is the good church you can't do. What is the command I go do? So I said, as I saw him, I knew it was him. So I said, man, come here, I want to pray for you. You know, me, pastor. He said, yes, man. I want to pray for you. And look on two sides and him. smile off his face. Uh, scan come up by front. When this can come up in falling and stand up before me. Do your thing. Me see, I that me want here a long time. Come in no my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Me know my thing. So, so, uh, so I laid hands on him. Hallelujah. And I said, Father, you know. I am your servant place here to do this work. And this man needs deliverance. When I said that, he was there laughing, you know. Because I feel he the shake and I mean, and I didn't laugh. And he, they look around like say, what oh, is my talk say? And I still had my hand on his head. And I said, Lord, whatever spirit is in him that is using him that is not of you dry it up by force now. and I say when I do that there I say ah! and he bent over and dropped on the concrete hearing head cook on the ground down there and I hear the lady ball out pastor you kill him <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't breathing you know laying flat on his black limbless and not breathing he looked like when dead for two and and i laid hands on him and then he started to breathe and breathe and and but he was weak couldn't get up he's really fit up his and he, it's same way like goes and same so and flat back and i speak strength into his body i say lord that strength come to this man now to stand up and to speak what the lord has done and i hold his hand i say come on you're gonna get up the time the lady now move out of the way because she realized he start to breathe so pastor not really kill him after all so <laughs> she <laughs> I hold his hand and I say, come on, you have strength in your body. Get up. And I pull him. He, he, he stood up, but he was waving like this, swaying. And I held him at his waist and said, yes, Lord, let strength come to his loins. Strength to his body. Strength his frame. Hallelujah. And I tell you. When that man felt strength coming to him, the first thing come out of that man's mouth. Hallelujah! I say you could hear it down the street. Hallelujah. And I say, what happened to you, man? So I give him the mic because I want to hear what happened to him. Can we just do my thing? Hallelujah. So he said he said when i heard you was praying i take your prayer light but you see when you said take out the spirit out of this man by force he said i feel a hand pushing to my chest and pull something out whenever you hear what i said 
He said, I felt a hand push into my chest and pull something out. And he fell limbless on the ground. But he said, He knew it was the Lord. And the man said, Man, I want to get baptized. I want to give my life to the Lord. You know. <laughs> I said, that's the power of God. We're not here for clap and sing song and jump off and call that church. The power of God is here. Hallelujah. 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 And I tell you, I was so, the church was all rejoicing and praising God when he started to give his testimony and tell what he do. And said he will never do that again. God save him now and he, he knew he usually hear his grandmother he says pray for him and he always hear my mother talk about church, church, church and, but he said never feel no power, no church all the time him, grandmother they talk about power God, he never feel no power, no God but he said man, I felt the power of God and I want more of that power come on somebody I thought everybody was pleased, everybody was praising God. Lady thank me much time before the night over after service done, service done the Friday. Man, Saturday, I, we were at the church cleaning up the church for Sunday to have service there on Sunday. We hear somebody they quarrel down the street. Something say uh, somebody they cuss somebody as then we hear the quarrel they come up the stairs because something say, Well, why look like they didn't come up here with them quarreling? Maybe they want me to be mediator between them. But we look now the lady come up, they cuss me out. So me take a man for ya. Cause he can't read nobody again. Look like he never know when he come. He never know when he come, man. He never know all of that would have happened. All right. Praise God. For the power of God is present. And she says, he said, she forced him to go, go read something to get some money for him. And he saying, go out there, but he can't see nothing for read. Come on. Because something, something moved in the spirit. That spiritual problem was adjusted in the spirit. You see, we can't take a pill to adjust that. We can't get something from the pharmacy to adjust that. Mm. Come on now. Can't show that all time. But the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And I talking to anybody here. The word of God and the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. makes the difference. Hallelujah. 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 And when you live in the life with the word and the Holy Spirit, the power of God will show up. Hallelujah. You're not doing some guesswork. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. I said this is not a guesswork. Then the power of God show up, things shift. Hello. When the power of God show up, things turn around. Hello, somebody. And if you know that, then you know, say, real power in the house. It's not just talk. Uh, it's not just hype. Uh, you have substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Come on, somebody. It must produce evidence. Come on now. It must produce evidence. I say it must produce evidence. I say it must produce evidence. So I know there's a lot of churches people go and they say they pray. They feel good say they prayed. But then you don't see no evidence. You don't see no shift. You don't see no turn. You don't see no difference. Where is the evidence? Once the power of God move man, you must see some evidence. What we say? 
You, you can't push your hand in some live current socket on, and we don't see say you touch no current. If you touch current man, we're going to see something. Not true. There's going to be a reaction for sure, say. Current hold you. But no one can hold life current. And they look normal. Hello, somebody. Talk to me here. Hallelujah. Because you need to understand that this is not some religion we come for. Religion lacks power. I say religion lacks power. The religious leaders, they, their power was mostly in the authority through the office that they sit in. But where was the power to heal and to deliver the people? It lacks power. And those were the religious leaders. Jesus did not come here to become another religious leader. He come to call men and women from every religion. He don't care what religion they were in. He's calling them to repentance and into true fellowship and communion with the Father. And he says none can come to the Father but by him. Come on. And none cannot come to him except the Spirit draws them. Correct? Come on now somebody. So we know that there is a divine order of how things are done in the house of God. Talk to me now. So it's not some oh my God some cook up, mix up blender and hope says something of what you're throwing there, something come out of it. You know what they kind of try your thing there. I look a splash at this, I look a splash at that. Him 149. Hello, somebody. Uh, and three more scripture. Three more psalms. Shake the tambourine. Uh -uh. It's more than all of those gymnastics. You need to have the power of God. And where the power of God is present, things shift. You're hearing this thing. We don't ask if it shift. We command it and it shift. Because heaven back up the word of God. Hello. And when we declare the word of God and stand with God. My God, you know if he ask the power to show up. Come on now. Because God's word never show up without power, you know. But it takes faith to unlock that power. It takes what? Faith. So it's not, it's not big faith you need. Because <laughs> if you say you have faith like a mustard seed, you can't move mountain. It's surely not big faith that it takes to move it. A mustard seed is very small. What the smile of a pinhead. Small and a pinhead too. Right, so if you consider that part of it and consider it, if it's so small to create such great impact, it's not so great your faith is that produce great works, but it's how great your God is. And he's saying, if you just put that means of trust in him, the results, my God, the results will be what? Immeasurable. It will be something that you said you couldn't fathom that such results could come. So it's not really your faith is powerful enough. It's the word of God that is powerful. And you put faith in that word, the power is unleashed out of that word. It's like if we put store up all some containers of gasoline inside this place. The gasoline in this place is highly flammable. So it can create a great explosion and destroy this building. But all the, the gasoline put in here, it says it don't, we don't have to come with one big fire to start the explosion. It just takes a spark. So the power is not the spark, you know. 
the power is really in the fuel but that spark unleashes that power come on now the same way it says that faith can move things that are rooted for many years come on because it's connected with the right source the word of God and it says all things that were made were made by the word of God there's nothing made that was not made by him come on somebody and so we know say in him was life and the life of men so he says that word that we receive from God has that life of God in it eternal life come on now so he said if you want to walk in a life beyond this life you need to connect with the word because the word lives so long forever that everlasting life is in the word the word will never pass away and those in the word will never pass away <laughs> glory to God the body will pass but the spirit will still live on because that's why the Lord said isn't Abraham still alive because he says did he say I am I was the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob or did he say I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob then he says if he says I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob then he says then Abraham still lives if he sees some living how would he still be the God of him God of what don't exist so he says God is the God of the living God is not the God of the dead <laughs> come on somebody you remember Jesus teaching that one God is the God of the living huh so, so you've got to understand there are strong thoughts that the enemy sold to you they are what the enemy wants to control your mind the way he controls your mind is through thoughts persons that tell you that the devil can't read your mind fooling you up because you need to understand spirit don't need to hear your mouth talk to hear what you say in your mind because what you say in your mind have a voice what you say in your mind what have a voice and they can hear that voice because they are not physical beings they are spiritual beings it's, satan is a fallen angel he's not a man he doesn't need to hear you speak to hear what you say you remember when the angels were sent were sent down to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it and they stopped by Abraham right and this they, they were telling Abraham the word that God gave for them that hey you're going to this time next year Sarah is going to have a son Sarah heard it and the word of God said Sarah laughed within herself she did not laugh with her mouth and the angel said we heard your laugh and she said no I didn't laugh because she knows she didn't laugh out of her mouth she laughed within herself within herself she said me at this age gonna have a son come on there it is in verse 12 Genesis 18 verse 12 Sarah laughed within herself within herself she didn't laugh out but spirit can hear what you say within yourself thoughts have a voice oh hallelujah when when you have a thought about something you hear a voice you know <laughs> you are not seeing words so what words are you hearing 
in your thoughts. It's have a voice. So when she laughed within herself, they knew who laughed within themselves. And they knew it was her, though she never laughed out. And said to her, Why did you laugh? Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Come on. Hello. Come on. It says the Lord said to her, not so. And it says, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I'll return and according to the time of life, Sarah shall have a son. But look at what Sarah said. Sarah denied it. Come on. Huh? Verse 15, Sarah, denied, Sarah said, I did not laugh because she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. In other words, I heard the laughter. You thought I didn't hear, but I heard it. What's the thing? Then what? Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. So when he says the Lord was speaking, the Lord is speaking to Abraham and his wife through those angels. And the angels appeared as men. As angels can shape form. They can shift their appearance, but their true form are angels. They have their true form. Angels form is different from men form, but they can have the appearance of men. They can transform to have an appearance, being spirit beings. Come on now. So, so Sarah denied it and said, no, she never do it. But we, the scripture showed that those men went down later down to Sodom and so realized that those men weren't just men. They were angels. Not true. So the word of God says we must carefully we entertain strangers because sometimes we entertain strange angels unaware. They appear like men, but they aren't men. Appearing like man don't mean they are man. Because it's clear then that when the men tried to have their way with them down in Sodom, they just waved, waved their hand and all the men out there was blind. That's not something that man can do. Because we have an and people who see bit blind. Come on now. Uh, they are angels. He, he, they just took Lot by the hand and took Lot out of that city. Lot could not shake out of their hand. You know. Their strength was not like men. They were angels. But they appeared. Their appearance was like men. Come on now. You got the thing? Hallelujah. So we know that the, those scriptures show us something that, that you, angels can hear your thoughts. And isn't Satan a fallen angel? Okay. So that's why some persons believe that if I don't say it out of my mouth, Satan can't do nothing about it. And then they wonder why it's still mash up. <laughs> because they, they, they don't understand. You, you see, you can speak it out of your mouth for people around you to hear. We, we, your, your mouth is given for you to speak for physical beings with you to hear but spiritual beings can hear your thoughts so that's why the Lord is saying you're not to entertain certain thoughts come on you're not to what entertain, entertain. it means uh, the thought, the desire by itself or the thought by itself is not the sin but when you entertain the thought, you feed it with more thoughts to 
to develop it to a position now to produce it. Got it? That's where we're taking that scripture from, James 1. It says, they are drawn away by his own desires and enticed. He says, when desire has conceived, and we say, how does a desire conceived? It's like a sperm that looks for an ovary. It has to have something to foster its growth and development. A sperm can grow into a human being by itself. It has to connect with an ovary. And the ovary have all the content within that egg to facilitate the growth of that sperm into a human being. So it says then, if you don't foster that thought, it cannot conceive sin. Come on. If you don't foster it, it cannot conceive sin. If there is no fostering of it, it will just pass. It will just be a passing thought. But how then do people sin? He says it's not the thought or the desire is the sin. But when that desire and thought is conceived, it brings forth sin. You entertain the thought, then it breathe it forth. It moves you to a place to put preference on that desire above what God says. Like Eve with that truth in the garden. She put her desire above what God said. Talking to you. Got it? So her, her desire to eat fruit was not a sin because God put them there and said they must eat from the trees that bear fruit there. So the desire to eat in fruit ought to be there for them to eat it. So the desire to eat fruit was what the devil tempted her with. She had the desire already to eat fruit. But what he was, what all she said now was that she's putting those desires above what God said. That is where producing. So having desires is not sin. Is putting those desires above what God said is the sin. Come on now. And those who learn those things can use the word of God in a very skillful way. You know, to disarm the enemy. To recognize that he can sow thoughts in your mind. Every thought you have did not come from God. Come on. He can sow thoughts into your mind. When you say the Lord speak to you, isn't it that you are the Lord sow a thought in you? Did you, did every time the Lord speak to you, you hear an audible voice like this speaking, say, hey Mary, I'm talking to you. So, so you hear that word in your spirit. We say, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit to do this, I just say this. You hear that word in your spirit. No, if God is a spirit and sow that word in your spirit. The devil can sow word in your spirit too. That's where people get evil ideas. That's where people's craving and entice and desires get corrupted. That's where people go off and do some things that they said, I wasn't really intending to do that. But one thing led to another. Not true. So the devil can sow it. But the devil being able to sow it is not the end of it. It is how you respond to it being sown. Talk to me. Because you see, even Jesus referred to the word of God as seeds being sown. And even though the seed was the word of God is sowing, he said even the word of God don't get faster than produced in certain environment. In other words, where he saw on the wayside where the word was not welcome, it never produced nothing. Among the rocks, it sprang up, but it wither as soon as temptation and trial come. Among the thorns, the thorns grew up and choke it. You see? It's where there is full entertainment and embracement of the word. 
that there is true fruitfulness. He spoke about that in the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13. He's showing you words so in your spirit. So did you think that Eve was there talking out loud with the serpent? That's what most people watch because they see it in mo Hollywood movies of Mary and Mary they talk to the serpent and the serpent someone get a voice and they talk back to her. Nothing like that happened. The same way she was tempted is the same way you are tempted. You are tempted by thoughts. She was told nobody should eat of it. She's told no one, no one can, can, can to touch it lest they die. And that serpent went on that tree and wrapped himself around that fruit. And she said, if it touch and die, oh me touch it. It will naturally die. Did he say? It didn't me bite it. If me bites that serpent and don't do me, oh, you go eat and do something. It's by what she's seen. The deception is coming. You will surely die. No money now will die. You really believe that? And then look at me touch you. going to make you wise you know it's good for food and make you wise and make you become like God come on something powerful in this thing God don't want you to have because if you get it you're going to be too come too powerful and after they ate it they surely realized that was not it they were deceived they put their desires above what God word said. Anybody does that will always end up in sin. The word of God must always come first. Got it? So that's why the word of God says we don't live by bread alone. Huh? But by every word that what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God so he said he doesn't say we don't he, he's not saying we don't live by bread we still need bread but he said not by bread alone come on now so if people work hard and diligent and fight to ensure that they have their bread because they want to make sure food that they yard as well as say food of their my yard if they work so hard and labor for bread, he says, don't labor so hard for bread that perish. Labor for the food that doesn't perish. What he's talking about, the word of God. You know Jesus said that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. The, the, that's what Jesus said to the serpent when he was being tempted in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 man don't live by bread alone or by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God or Jesus also told them don't labor for the bread that perish come on labor for the bread that comes from heaven he's talking about the word of God because those that eat that bread going to die but those that eat the bread that come from heaven shall never die. Oh my God, that's awesome. Hello, somebody. Because the eternal life is in the word. So who feasts and the word is feasting and what? Eternal life. Life goes beyond your body. <laughs> your body is temporary. But the life that God is giving you is eternal. Hallelujah. And long after this body drop, life will still be going on. Come on now. That's why Jesus spoke about the man who was in hell and the man who was in heaven. Eh? In Luke chapter 16. Huh? So Jesus there, Jesus in John chapter 6, verse 27. Do not labor for food which perishes 
but for food which what endures to what everlasting in other words the food that brings everlasting life is what you must labor for which the son of man will give you because the father has what set his seal on him and the seal the father gives is that the father has given him life and he said he has life to give to whosoever come to him what was that life eternal life and so some many of the disciples left him because he talked about eat of my flesh and drink of my blood and he went have life and he said oh this man is beside himself and the word of god said many of the disciples that were walking with him didn't walk with him anymore they left him and the 12 that was left he says haven't i chosen you 12 yet one of you is of the devil come on because he said, uh, are you going to leave too? And Peter said, Lord, where are we going to go? For you have the word of eternal life. He's saying that the word Jesus was speaking to them is eternal life. Come on now. Is the word you feed on for that life? Is not bread in your cupboard? Come on. You can stack up all the bread in the cupboard for somebody who's going to die. And he died and leave all the food there. But no, cup, no food can be in the cupboard and God gives the person that, that word that they're going to live. And they live without no food in the cupboard. Because of the word of God. So which is more important, the food or the word? But there's still people labor hard, you know. For food, you know. Man, if you know how much money people spend a year time for food. And you tell him, say, so that to the church, they say, no, nah, I have no money. Come on now. And they say, but did you know it's written in the word? It's written in the word, First Corinthians chapter 9. Paul wrote there and, and said, man, we sow to you spiritual things and shouldn't we reap of your carnal things? That way he says, what we sow to you is eternal. What you're giving to us is temporary. We use it and it's gone, but when we give you, if you use it, it can use again and it can use again. It's not leaving you for the rest of your life. So he says, are you really giving more than us? You're not giving more than us. That's why Paul said, if we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? It's still a great thing for people because they value the material things more than the spiritual things. So the carnal man will say, Ooh, Pastor, now get rich out for me. But he don't realize he staying away to save money, actually sacrificing his soul not to spend so money. Because he might feel good if he come and give something, so he'd rather not come. So, so when he don't come, he save the money and he can do more things out there. But at what price did he gain the things out there? Gain the things and lose his own soul. Because none of the things he get out there can save his soul. So, so how much would you give to save your soul? Is there too much to give? To save your soul. You ever think about that one? Is there too much to give to save your soul? Okay. You want to know so that will be the weeping and wailing and judgment day. Because on judgment day many at that time will be ready to give everything for it. But it's too late. It's too late. 
what they're willing to give now they the way of the offer is off the table the door is closed God say enough is enough come on because you can't outgive the Lord all you have belong to him anyway so when he tells you to give it's not for you to lose what you have it's for you to gain more because if you can trust him with more he will give you more come on but if you trust him with little you'll still just have little because that's what you trust him with come on now. that's why Paul said those who give sparingly reap sparingly those who give bountifully reap bountifully come on now so why is so much people reaping sparingly in the house of God exactly they are sowing sparingly it always amazes me how people will talk about if tithing is still should be done because we are under new covenant because tithing was under the old covenant and I said to them you do you know that under the new covenant you are not required to give less if the word of God says your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees do you give less than what the Pharisees give the Pharisees tied in mint and cumin. Tiny grains, they still be only 10% and put it off. He said they are exact in their tithe for everything that they get. And the Lord said, you have been given more. So who more is given to is less they must give. See a place square now. Nobody no wants to say it unless they get convicted. Mm -hmm. right? Because the, the thing about it is that do you realize whether the Lord, who the Lord, the Lord stand by the, the offering plate and watch the men they give? Lord Jesus do that, Father. Mm -hmm. Watch them giving, and a lady came who was a widow and gave her all. He said, When she left, she left empty handed as a widow with nothing to go home with. A widow, you know, she don't have a husband to finance her when she go home. And she left empty. And the Lord said, she gave more than all the rest. Because when she gave, she gave all. You remember that? So is, ten, is tithing all? <laughs> I'm asking you, I said, is tithing all? You can't talk. No, no afraid if you talk. We're not ready for if convict you yet. I say it's tithing all. What is tithing? Ten percent is called one tenth. Tithe actually means first tenth. So when they say ten percent is the same thing they call it. Tithe. Tithe cannot be more than ten percent or less than ten percent. Tithe is ten percent. Amen. It's a set amount that is called tithe. Amen? Right, so whether it's plenty or little, tithe is still just tithe. 10%. Praise God. Right, so he, he says, there was tithe and then there's offering. So they gave tithe and they gave offerings under the old covenant. This woman gave all she had. That is more than tithes and offering. Talk to me now. So, so, I don't think those who said it under new covenant understand what new covenant means. <laughs> oh, Jesus. 
Because in I think it's in Acts two, Acts chapter two, it spoke about the 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 the, the giving and bringing money to the apostles' feet. He, he said they sold lands and houses. They didn't give a tithe from it. Do you know what it is to sell a house and give all the proceeds from it? To sell land and give not 10% of the profit from the land. All that came from selling the land. You really tell me the New Testament believers doing that? Huh? No man, they don't want to part. They want to say Jesus paid it all. Let's see there. Acts 4, verse 34 and 35. Now there was any, now was there any, uh, tell me, give me the verse before that 34. Yeah. Praise God. I can understand where you give me that still. Uh, 33, all right. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Great grace was upon them all. Now there was, now was there any among them who? Who lacked? Why wasn't there anything among them that lacked? Why wasn't there any among them that lacked? There it is. For all who were possessors of lands, our houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. It's not part of it they bring. It's everything from it they bring. And laid them at the apostles' feet. And they, the apostles, distributed to everyone as they had need. That's why there was no lack there. See it? That's why there's no lack. Yeah, because they gave all and then they had more to come back to those who didn't have. Come on now. That's why they had things in common. And it says, and Joseph, whose name was Barnabas, by the apostle which translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought what? The money and laid it at the apostles feet come on and i think it's in chapter 5 we find that ananias and sapphira tried to do the same thing to god they didn't give all and that's all they did in the church you know yeah. they came and said it's all the pain when it was not all and they died husband and wife same day So what, when Ananias and Sapphira died, was that New Testament? <laughs> was that New Testament? Of course. Ananias and Sapphira is Jesus' time. And it's after Jesus' resurrection and the apostles them preaching and ministering now. That is after the day of Pentecost and church start. And two people dead in a church because they bring and say it's all when it was not all. So, so if you believe, says less we under no because we under grace. Oh, then two people are dead because they never bring all. At least no, that's not pain. Mm. You see? You see, God is not pressuring you into this thing, uh, holding a big stick over your head, but you need to trust God like that. You need to what? Trust God, trust God like that. If you trust God like that, you, you can't count what's coming back to you. That's what Paul was talking about when he says, Giving it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall what? men pour into your bosom it says not out of heaven it coming from it says there's a lot of produce and increase in the earth that God will unlock to you but you must trust him if you do that in the house to see that kind of return so it's not like the return is not there but many don't trust him that way to see it you understand it here it is. 
For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Come on. Same measure you use. So if you're, if you're stingy in your giving, you also receive stingily. You receive income to your word. Why? You know, come the way you expect. It comes stingy. Because that's how you are. You are a stingy giver. If you are a bountiful giver, the grace is flowing. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? That you can control then whether you be a stingy receiver or a bountiful receiver. <laughs> you can control your harvest by how you give. Is that correct? You can what? All right, we done. Get get up, get up, cause you don't want to sleep. Praise God. Let's let's <laughs> let me release you in Jesus' name. You go and go eat your food and break your force. Hallelujah. Cause my meat is to do the Father's will. I'm I'm very much energized for this. I'm here every day doing this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord, somebody. All right, we're going to get in some worship on you. Release your faith in the name of Jesus. Do you believe the word you have heard today? Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. My God is awesome, He can move Lead me here in the valley, hide me from the rain My God is awesome, use me when I'm broke Strength when I've been weak and wherever He will reign God is, is awesome, is awesome. Come on, declare is awesome. He's awesome too. My God is awesome. He's awesome, he's awesome. You believe is hey. awesome. My God is awesome. He can move my Lead me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is Use me when I'm broke. Strength when I am weak and wherever he will. Come on, declare. My God is He's awesome, he's awesome. Yes, he is. Come on, declare he is. My God is. He's awesome, he's awesome. Yeah. If you believe, you can receive. Yeah. He's mighty, he's mighty. He's mighty, he's mighty, awesome, Woo! awesome, hey, he's great, he's great, he's great, he's great, awesome, come on, you believe it, hey, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, awesome. If you believe in yours, hey, hey, deliver, 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 awesome. Yes, he is. My God is awesome. You can move. God is 
Jesus is me when I'm strength when I've been weak and forever here. Come on, declare, my God is He's awesome, he's awesome. Hey, awesome he is, come on. If you believe he is, hey, my God is He's awesome, he's awesome. Forever he is. Hallelujah. He's great. He's great. He's great. He's great. Awesome. You believe it today? Hey, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer. Awesome. Hey. Protect her, protect her, protect her, protect her, protect her. He is, I know he is. But I'm a provider, 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 provider. Oh, yes, he is. My God is. Can move, keep me in the, hide me from the, oh my God, is use me when I'm broken, vent when I am weak and forever he will. Come on, give him praise. You believe he's awesome. Is the Almighty God? Is there anything too hard for God? Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Is there anything too hard for God? Come on, give God the praise on it. Put a praise on it in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Everything you do. Is well done. We come to you. Look into you, the author and the finisher of our faith, to order our steps by your word. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It shows us where we're standing and it shows us where we're going. As we stand here today, we turn our cups up to you, Lord God, to receive divine intervention of our lives, to look to you, who is our source, the lift of our head, the joy of our countenance, our light and our salvation. We surrender every care at your feet right now. We cast down every image, every thought and every cares that the enemy has raised up before us as some immovable mountain. You said if we have faith like the mustard seed, we can speak to those mountains and they will hear us in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, somebody, somebody. Raise up your faith in this house. Lift up your hands to the most high God. And cry out to God. Let him hear you today. Open your mouth and let God arise. And his enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ever think, hope, or imagine. Today is your day of salvation. Come on, raise up your hearts to him. Let him intervene. Let him have his way. Surrender all to the king of kings. 
who is the king of glory the Lord God strong and mighty the Lord God mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord of hosts he is the king of glory do you believe all things are possible for them that believe and God wants to heal you today and set you free come on trust in him right now Cast all your cares upon him and trust the anointing of Jesus Christ to do what you cannot do. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind all your evil plans. We crush all your conspiracy and blood against the people of God. We render them ineffective. We cast down every image and every imagination, every feeling, every view, every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We capture them and bring them into captivity. To captivity to you, Lord God. Obedience to Christ. In the name of Jesus. 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 Break every chain, Lord. Yeah. And let your spirit move in a mighty way in the hearts of your people. Every point of entry the enemy has in their life, cut it off right now and seal it with your blood, Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ. Let your angels with flaming sword be assigned to them to overthrow and destroy the works of the wicked one. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up your hands to the most high God and let praises rise on the inside. God is looking for somebody with that faith today. Faith attracts the miraculous. Hallelujah. And if you believe the word of God, faith will arise in your heart. Connect and agree with the Holy Spirit. And the supernatural will take place. Right where you are. Right where you are. <laughs> this very minute. <laughs> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Allow him to move. To break that chain. To break that shackle. To loose that tie. The enemy has upon you. To sever between soul and spirit. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing between bone and marrow and choice between soul and spirit between the thoughts and the intents of the heart hallelujah 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 Yes, Lord. So right now, Lord, come to this place. And remove everything 
that is not of you. Holy Spirit. Saturate this place with your anointing right now. Hallelujah. Come on, wave those hands to the Lord. Acknowledge His presence right where you are. Let Him touch you. Let Him heal you. Ooh, my God. That spirit of oppression, those false weights and burdens will be broken off your shoulder. For he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's a rest in the Lord that the world cannot give, that a day cannot give, that a week cannot give. Is the rest in the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. Let his presence wrap you right now. Anybody in here? Anybody know his presence? Let faith arise and connect. It's not about the flesh, it's about the spirit. Spirit to spirit. Connect with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's right, that's right. That's one, that's one, that's one. More to come. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. Let the spirit, that anointing saturate you right now. Bask in the glory of God. Understand God is taking you to a higher place. Hallelujah. While you're praising him, something is shifting around you. While you're praising him, something is loose. Something is breaking. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't judge by outward appearance. Come on. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit lead and direct you. Watch what he's going to do right now. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody press in. Somebody press in. Somebody press in. Somebody press in. In the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every name. Whatever the condition, it's got a name. But it's subjected to the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Every chain got to break. Every demonic walls are broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Raise, raise the atmosphere in the room. Raise up a standard against the enemy. Cause every demon and shaman to be broken. Irreparably damaged. Reverse the curse. Send it back to the pit of hell from where it came from. Let your anointing, your anointing, Saturate and make a life. Robo shatara baba Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Raise up a price. What's what God going to do in his place? You think the devil can stop it? This is bigger than him. Because who God bless, no man can curse. God is doing.
doing something here. It came on shot out of Baba Situ. Worship from your heart, worship from your spirit. Let him take you there. Let him take you there. You're going up higher. You're getting stronger. You're coming out of this with a shout. You're coming out of this with a praise. It's getting better. It's getting better. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> when God get ready. They got to move, they got to move. Every creeping, crawling creature, every slithering creature got to back off. Everything that's holding you down got to move. Because God anoint this day for you. God anoint this time for you. God anoint this place for you. God anoint this minister for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him come on somebody praise him break out of your shell deny yourself let Christ be seen in the name of Jesus what God is about to do no man can stop it hallelujah hallelujah Fire, fire, fire to the enemy. Turmoil, pestilence, everything the devil eat up, he got to release it right now. In the name of Jesus, everything the enemy swallow up, he got to cough it out now. In the name of Jesus, fire, fire of God. Ah! In the name of Jesus, come on, somebody, raise up a praise. Raise up a praise. Go to Ramama Moshe, Terebe Baba Sete. He can't tell them, sir. See them, they run, see them, they run, see them, they run, see them, they run. Kekadabo Shandalama, sir. Cause power, power, power. Power is in the name of the Lord. Power, power, power. No matter what the devil trying, no matter where he's coming from. Hey! He got to loose. He got to let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shut. Hallelujah. Somebody raise up a praise. Somebody know that God is doing something. Somebody knows that God is moving. Oh, shake your baba. Hallelujah! He's the mountain mover. He's the problem solver. Yeah. Woo. Woo. He walked by faith and not by sight. Ah. God is dressing you for war. Hallelujah. Yes, stop. God is dressing you, preparing you, equipping you to take back what the devil has stolen. The devil will not win. He doesn't have the last word. God has the last word. And he declare all power is given unto me. Both in heaven and in earth. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess. Mm, that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Aha. Aha. Mountains are falling right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Giants are being slain. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere is shifting to 
your advantage. Come on, wave those hands to the Lord. Mm. Angels of the Lord are busy in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The glory of God is in the house. Hallelujah. Every chain the enemy has cast around your feet. We break them right now. All those black chains. In the name of Jesus. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Ooh. Heal those feet, Lord. Heal those feet. Order those feet in your house. Order those feet where you want them to be. For David said one thing have I desired and that will I seek after that I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Mm. All the days of my life Behold in the beauty of the Lord and inquiring in his temple. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise. Yes, Lord. The healing Jesus. He's healing you right now. His presence is healing. What a healing Jesus I found in you. What a healing Jesus you refresh, restore, and renew your Jesus, for such a time as this, arise on healings, son of righteousness. Come on, what a healing Jesus I found in you. Hallelujah. What a healing Jesus. Yes, Lord. You refresh, restore, and renew your healing Jesus. For such a time as this, arise on healing. Son of righteousness, what a come on, come on. I found in you what a healing, what a healing, Jesus. You refresh, restore, and renew your healing, Jesus. For such a time as this, arise on healing, Son of righteousness. Come on. His healing grace is in this ear right now. If you just believe, receive it in Jesus' name. Mm. His healing virtue 
is flowing now. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are here to heal, deliver, and to set free. What a healing Jesus I have found in you. Yes, Lord. What a healing Jesus. Oh, you refresh, restore, and renew your healing. Jesus, for such a time as this, arise on me, son of just then. Come on, one more time. What a healing Jesus, I found in you, I found in you. Oh yes, what a healing Jesus. You refresh, restore, you refresh, restore, and renew your uh, healing Jesus. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, arise on you. Son of righteousness, hallelujah. Arise on healing, son of righteousness. Arise on healing, son of righteousness. Come on, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. His presence makes the difference. His anointing destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone want to come and lay hands on them? Just come now. Praise God. And trust the Lord and his healing grace to operate over your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Your presence. Your Hallelujah. presence. Hallelujah. Your presence. Hallelujah. Is heaven. Roshamasi. Hallelujah. 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 Heal. Deliver this body from every ailment, every sickness and disease and dysfunction, Hallelujah. every stress and anxiety, Hallelujah. every fear and, and insecurity. Break and shatter. Hallelujah. Destroy with a sword, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let it be evicted from this body now. In the name of Jesus, ha ha, I release grace over you now. Grace and more grace. That's it. Grace in the name of Jesus. Receive it in your spirit, man. That's right. Receive it in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, grace and more grace. Hallelujah. What the enemy meant for evil will be turned around for good. That God will get the glory out of this. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, she mahanda. Rebebo kurama mama ma katoromo shende la bas hinde bo shanda la masitu hie bo shanda in the name ma 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 kuhoshe ba tu kuhende in the name of Jesus loose be loose be loose shekuhosha baba hehe 
from every shackle and fear and doubt in the name of Jesus and spring forth with healing in Jesus name Lord we thank you for your healing grace your anointing your anointing makes the difference burn off everything the enemy has sown to her hurt reverse every curse and spell against her life right now in the name of Jesus we command it we crush her and dismantle every work of Satan now we cramp and paralyze and pull them out pull them out pull them out pull them out oh she must say to Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for divine wisdom to be released of this man to manage his home and his fears in the way that reflects your power and your kingdom in his life in the name of Jesus shut down the councils of hell devour every plot and conspiracy of hell every demonic attachment shut them off in the name of Jesus Christ right now right now right now in the name of Jesus touch Lord God him one more time touch him once more God ha -ha. touch him once more in the name of Jesus cramp and paralyze every work of Satan against his life against his finances against his marriage against his health against his wealth against his business against his household in the name of Jesus hallelujah yes Lord release grace and more grace over him and over his family and over his household right now that they will know something has shifted to your honor and to your glory Lord in the name of Jesus put the devil to shame crush them under his feet crush 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 every one of them every one of them scorpion and serpent and dragon every pestilence and plague the enemy has set again oh God reverse their works now send it back to the pit that the earth swallow them up now in the name of Jesus and let your peace grant him peace hallelujah that pass it all understanding to come upon him over his spirit man over his soul ah yes lord let it be well in jesus name kosha tarabasa release fresh anointing 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 life-giving spirit in the name of jesus wash your hands wash your feet wash let the fire be stirred up in her once more in the name of jesus in the name of jesus holy ghost and fire oh she must light a fire in her spirit lord hallelujah let the light shine 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 in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hallelujah quickening spirit out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters in jesus name I revive in jesus name life we bind debt, we bind every sentence of debt and send it back. We release life. Life. Every sentence of hell we cancel. Hallelujah and abort in the name of Jesus. Fire to the enemy. Back to the pit of hell. Leave her alone. Leave her household. Leave her family. Leave her finance. Leave now. In the name of Jesus. Sanctify and empower, Lord. 
Fill her with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. You said, No good thing shall you withhold from them that walk upright. Rebecca Shetarabasitu. Hiroshima. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You know how to make the crooked path straight. Rebecca to Roshama Katarabase. Hiroshima. Higher. Increase the anointing upon her life now. Increase, 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 increase. Akarobo Shata. I say increase, increase. More, 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 more. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Lord, release your anointing upon this man. Your anointing, non-anointing. Quicken his innermost being. With life from on high in the name of Jesus. Let the eternal life spring forth. Let the eternal life manifest. In the name of Jesus. Stir up the anointing. Stir up the anointing in him. Revive him again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break every shackle. Cut and break and dismantle every chain and free him to serve the true and living God in spirit, in spirit, in spirit, and in truth. He Korama anoint his lips with praise. Fill his spirit and his soul with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. With the word. Let your word saturate him now. Hallelujah. Engrafted in his spirit. Hallelujah. And let the fire of God be lit in him. Rebuke every darkness and let the light shine. Shine, 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 shine. In Jesus' name. Koshama say, we release anointing over you right now and over your children. In the name of Jesus, we dismantle every spirit of depression and stress and anxiety. We dismantle every tormenting spirits that have been sent to hound and to torment your house and your marriage and your family and your children. We reverse. Koshama say, we destroy this rope over to and destroy by fire right now in the name of Jesus and raise up a standard against the enemy. Let the angels of God with flaming sword be mounted around you and fill Lord God fill to the overflow put your fire within over her and this child in the name of Jesus there it is, there it is, there it is there it is in Jesus, in Jesus in Jesus, in Jesus in Jesus mighty name Lord we thank Thank you that you never miss, you never lost one. Everything you done is well done. And you that began a good work, you're able to perform it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you have called this woman for this purpose, O oh God, that the vision will not tarry, that the vision will not weigh, oh my God, will not weigh aside, but it be fulfilled as she run with you. Run with purpose. Run in obedience to the heavenly call. In obedience, my God, to the voice that speak in our spirit and let her know here is the way. Walk in it. In the name of to Put the devil to shame right now. My God, cause his arrows and darts to backfire into his belly right now. In the name of Jesus, raise up a, a, a host of angels around her now and around her house and around her family to deliver 
and to set free. Aha. Yes, Lord, minister, minister, minister to her spirit man right now. Strain her in a most being. Hallelujah. Cause all it hurts from childhood to be healed in the name of Jesus. Healed. My God, those wounds that she's been carrying to be healed. Oh, Sheba Sata. Because there is healing in the house. There is healing in the name of Jesus. And you can heal the deepest wound. You can heal the deepest wound. Hallelujah. There's not one vessel that you can mend. And right now, in the name of Jesus, let your healing virtues flow. 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 Yes, Lord, you are further to take her higher heights and deeper depths. Hallelujah. And her heart is open. Yes, Lord, lead her into deeper truths, deeper knowledge, deeper connection, deeper grace. In the name of Jesus, and put the devil to shame. In the name of Jesus, all the naysayers who said it could not happen, all the naysayers who said it would not be, let them see your victory shining through in her life, Lord. In the name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, give God the praise. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, we thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah over this man in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will guide his steps, keep his foot in your house, Lord. Keep his eyes, keep his heart, keep his heart, keep his mind stayed on you in the name of Jesus. Keep his mind stayed on you in the name of Jesus. I pray that every distraction, distortion, delusion, every deception of the enemy will be exposed under divine fire. My God and rend that ineffective order his steps by your word keep him Lord by your mighty hand from the wicked one let not the enemy have spoil you, make a spoil of him oh God but that you will keep him by your power from the wicked one and that he'll walk hand in hand with you Lord he obeying your instruction and following your leading in his life in the name of Jesus baptize him oh God in your anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Break off every yoke, every weed, every entanglement, everything that in the heart will frustrate growth and fruitfulness in his life. Flush it out, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Flush out every ways of the past. Flush out every tendencies from the old man and let the new man that is written in Christ, created in Christ in true holiness and righteousness spring forth in the name of Jesus and let new testimony come out of this hallelujah that will cause the agnostics and doubters to say this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes come on give God the praise Lord we thank you that there is power in your name there is not anything too hard for you and you are the one that call us to this place to show forth your glory because the heavens declare your glory and the firmament showed your handiwork oh God and you the angels declared the whole earth is full of your glory and you are here to manifest it to lead us from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory it's not over till it's over and you got higher heights and deeper depths to bring us oh God as we embrace your word hallelujah break every shackle of the enemy break every worldly ties break every worldly association heal and deliver raise up a standard against the enemy now Lord holy ghost and fire baptize him with holy ghost and with fire Lord and fill him with your holy spirit 
let him hear you on a whole new level in the name of Jesus. Let him see visions on a whole new plane in the name of Jesus and lead him, lead him and order his steps into greater things, mighty things, glorious things. Expand his territory. Expand the influence over his life as you lead him in all truth. Hallelujah and I gird him in your Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Come on give God the praise. Hallelujah Father we thank you in the name of Jesus for your anointing. It's your anointing that destroys every yoke and that lifts every burden. We release your anointing over this young woman. Your anointing over her life. Your anointing over her spirit. Your anointing over her body. It's your anointing oh God that caused demons to tremble and to flee because they got to bow. You have given us power over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Matthew 10 verse 1 declares it and we stand upon your written word and declare that Satan is already defeated. He's already broken. He's already thrown down. The evil one has been cast down and he's subjected to Christ under our feet as joint ears with Jesus. We trample him underfoot. For you said we shall tread upon the lion, upon the scorpion, upon the dragon, upon the serpent and they will do us no harm. We shall crush them under our feet in the name of Jesus. Crush them Lord and every seed they sow in our life. Crush them. Detox her of everything the enemy has sown to her hurt. Restore double for her trouble. All the years that the locusts and the palmer worm and the caterpillar have eaten up. Reverse every bomb yard and graveyard curse. Reverse! Hey! In the name of Jesus. And let your anointing now shower, 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 shower down upon her in her spirit, in her soul, in her body, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And let every demons flee as your Holy Spirit undergird her by your power and lead her into all truth. Continue to minister to her, Lord, and make her every bit whole. Heal the wounds in her spirit, the wounds in her mind, the wounds in her emotion. Healer of all the years, the uh, early years of abuse and, and pain and affliction. Heal in the name of Jesus, for you are the healer. You are the healer, and your word goes deeper. Your word goes between soul and spirit, uh, between thoughts and the intents of the heart, between bone and marrow, in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for healing and for delivering her right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, give God the praise. Lord, we thank you for fresh oil over your daughter right now, over her mind and over her spirit. Cause her to excel beyond her wildest expectations, Lord. Let this sense a new anointing upon her life, a fresh anointing upon her life, that new things are awakening for her. New doors are coming open right now that will grant favor and grace over her life. You are speaking to her. You are speaking over her and reversing hallelujah the works of Satan sending it into remission send it into a place of destruction because what the enemy meant for evil you're turning it you're turning it you're turning it around for good hallelujah what he meant to destroy them you're using to build them what he meant to push them away you're using it to draw them in the name of Jesus and you're going to get the glory out of this father so Lord cover under your blood heal her, heal her inside and outside in Jesus name and let your glory show up in this family to the house to the hand and glory of your precious name come on give God the praise Father we thank you for your anointing anoint this mother Lord 
strengthen her give her double for her trouble for you said those that wait upon you you will you will renew their strength they will mount with wings like an eagle they will run and not be weary walk and not faint young men will faint and young lion will lack what what oh god even you give power to the faint and strength to the weak hallelujah hallelujah and those who wait on you you renew their strength cause your strength to be renewed now renew her her oh she must uh, renew lord god her faith renew her spirit renew her soul renew her health renew her wealth renew her relationship renew her family in the name of jesus renew her finances order her steps to your word and cause her to see the divine shifts taking place that to be evidence to your hand upon her life in the name of jesus come on give god the praise right now hallelujah release anointing healing and deliverance over her in jesus name of her spirit and her mind healing and deliverance that her spirit uh, might god be inclined to you and to your leadership in her life uh, that flesh will not take over or take control but order her steps through your word keep her by your power from that wicked one the evil one that seeks to corrupt to taint uh, to seduce and destroy your work my god i pray that his work will now be thwarted and rendered ineffective in the name of jesus let grace upon grace be released to her now in the name of jesus for total recovery and renewal of mind in your god as your power is released that she will be transformed hallelujah as you declared and ordained it should be in jesus name Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we release your anointing over this young man in the name of Jesus. Keep his feet in your house, oh God. Keep him from slipping, from being enticed through the world and sin and immorality, that he will keep his heart stayed on you. For you said you will keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Keep his heart on you. For you said those who mind the flesh, hardly reap the things of the flesh. And those that are sown in the flesh produce corruption and death but does that so in the spirit produce life and peace in the name of Jesus use him Lord as an instrument to turn his family around to reach the rest of his family that they too will see the light in him and know the life in him is real and that indeed you are doing a new thing in him oh God ah, ha, ha. break every shackle destroy the work of Satan from over his life raise him up oh God as a man of God to serve and to worship you in spirit and in truth and to see your word your miracle take forth in his life as a testimony to the ungodly of how great is our God we give you praise Lord in Jesus name come on give God the praise hallelujah father we thank you your oil is fresh oh god and it's flowing from the throne and i pray that fresh oil will flow over pastor stevenson in the name of jesus fresh oil upon him from the corner of his head to the sole of his feet refresh and renew his spirit man hallelujah wherever he's felt drained and poured out that he will find a, a refilling now a renewal now revival now in the name of Jesus chop off and root out everything the enemy sown to his earth let it bear no fruit let it send no root let it send no shoot in his life but keep him by your mighty hand show the devil that is you rule oh God show him show him that this one belongs to you in the name of Jesus for you put your mark upon him you seal him robo shatter seal him with your Holy Spirit and fill him to the overflow in the name of Jesus Christ let out of his belly flow rivers of living waters hallelujah hallelujah and give him a 
oh God, hallelujah, that he will never thirst again in Jesus' name. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you that your anointing destroys every yoke and lifts every burden. What you began, you're able to bring into fruition. Hallelujah. And so we raise up Sister Mitzi before you right now and said, show forth your glory, Lord. You've been showing it before and you're showing it now. But till the sun acts, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world began. Give her that glory. Increase and increase and increase and increase. Burn out every muscle and dregs of the enemy, every residue of the past. Burn and consume and let your Holy Spirit raise her up to a higher level. Higher level. Higher level. Higher level. Somebody praise God in here. What we say, praise him, praise him. Anybody got a praise? Anybody know to praise? Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! His power is at work. It's breakthrough time for God's people and the devil can't stop it. It's already declared in the heavens and we agree in the earth. Hallelujah. Corona can't stop it. That sentence can't stop it. Accident and murder and peril can't stop it. God release it. Hoshama Seto. And we agree and declare it is so. In Jesus' name. Come on, praise God one more time in the house. Glory to God. Victory is yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, cover every household here. Represented. Send your angelic coast to every house connecting with this ministry. Oh God, dispatch them with flaming sword to cast out any spirit lingering there anything waiting for showing up we pray that you'll fly every trap this month every ambush every backlash and whiplash we reverse in the name of Jesus hallelujah every backfire we reverse in the name of Jesus and we plead the blood over their homes the blood over their families the blood over their household Mark that gateway, mark that fence, mark that doorway, mark that window, mark that bed, mark that closet, mark the hallway, mark. Let no evil come nigh their dwelling. Keep them, Lord. Keep them, Daddy. By the power of your mighty hand, we give you glory and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, praise him one more time. 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 Glory to God. It is done in Jesus' name. Go home in the presence and in the anointing of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God and expect good results in Jesus' name. Praise God. I'm going to give you a chance to sow. Just put up your hands and envelopes will be given to you. And then we release you. Praise God. It's time to release you now. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't want to keep it too late. We already gone one hour over. Oh, my God. Hush. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. For those who are watching us online, you're watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministry International. We're here at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. He really wanted to connect with us and see the power of God at work in your life. He's already been working, but as we connect, there's a greater release over us. 
Hallelujah. The word of God said is a is an overflow in our connection. He says, "Our oh, blessed it is for bridging to dwell together in unity." It's like the the the, the rain that proceed and come upon the Mount Hermon and came down as rivers and water the land and the land produced fruit. It says, "Like the oil that come down Aaron's head, down his beard, and down the skirts of his garments." He says, "For there the Lord commanded the blessings." and life everlasting praise god and i want to command some blessing in your life and i'm telling you you need to have this kind of connection iron sharpen iron so when we connect hallelujah the more we connect together in the lord the more we connect together with each other in the lord then there's a greater flow of anointing word of god says as the as long as empty vessels kept coming the oil kept flowing from that bottle as that widow was pouring out the oil in the bottle the more bottles were brought more oil flowed until there was no more then the oil stopped just like that the lord is pouring out to you pouring out to you pouring out to you pouring out to you all those who are available and open their hearts to him and come and connect with his servants will see that overflow praise god hallelujah because that overflow came in our house because that woman connected with the man of god come on somebody it's not just her just crying out to god as a widow but she connect with the man of god and in doing so there's a there's a miracle that follows praise god and so we wanted to connect with those who god appoint for you to connect with praise god and understand that there's a grace that flows in that connection praise god and we wanted to get the benefits of that in jesus name amen praise god hallelujah if you want to see this ministry live stream you can check it out on facebook look for richard fagan and send a friend's request to be plugged into the live stream or you can subscribe to our youtube channel richard fagan on youtube and you'll see the recordings at your own convenience when you're ready to watch it or when you have the time to do so you can sit in and watch the services and really enjoy the presence and the glory of god amen Praise God. You can also sow to this ministry through our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Praise God. You can sow through that site. You can sow through PayPal. Praise God. Yes, for Richard Fagan, Hallelujah, and PayPal. And so to Pastor Rich43 at yahoo.com. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. We need to add that one to it too. Praise God. So that, that's really where it's at now. You can sow to the website. You can write your prayer requests and your praise report on the website. And we'll be following through to connect with you to see miracles and breakthrough in your life as we continue to pray and see the face of God manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You're blessed today. Oh my God. We've been, we've been running over time. Praise God. And still running. All right. You're going to release you now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you real good. Have a great week in Jesus' name. God bless you all.